about making gradients or some type of a color fill that moves from like a lighter shade up into a darker shade. You see these used an awful lot in the background on everything from advertisements, banner ads, even on social media posts for the graphic and things like that. You can make this in InDesign, but I typically find it's just so much easier to make them in Photoshop. You get a better on-screen representation. Um, the tool is easier to use, and in some ways, it's a smoother blend from this thing here in the middle all the way out to the edge or whatever you're trying to do. Sometimes the ones in InDesign look like they're very stepped or people call them that they have bands. It almost looks like white, not quite white, light blue, all the way out to the darker shades. So they're much smoother in Photoshop. That's why I'm going to build them here. So I'm going to start off by just saying I am going to use these to be working on a document that is eight and three eighths by 10 and seven eighths. Probably set 200 DPI as my standard pixel resolution. That's probably good for most pictures. To be honest, since it's just a blend and there's not a lot of detail in it, it could be even lower resolution than this and it would probably look just fine. Now I'm going to just click create a blank page. I am going to go ahead and make a new layer uh, by clicking on this post-it note looking icon here. I'm not actually going to duplicate my blank white layer because I'm just worried about making something new on top. I'm going to reset these guys so everything goes back to normal. What I would say is the way this tool works with this tool right here in these settings, first of all, pick your darker color. So I clicked on my foreground color and I'm going to pick some shade of kind of turquoisey blue somewhere in here. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to copy this one color. This is the hex color of the page, so it's one set of letters sums up all this information. It's much easier to do than trying to jot down all these different percentages. Click OK. I could hit this little switcher thing and I could just run this from white to my darker color. And if I go select the tool right here, that shows the standard icon right here is the one up in the top left corner of all these options. Going from white to the blue, push and hold my tool in the middle of the page, drag out. And that's great. Sometimes though this is too violent or too harsh to go straight to white. So I'm just going to hit Command Z to undo that. So I'm coming back in here and clicking on my white swatch. I'm going to paste in my other blue. And I'm going to drag this color on my brightness command, and on my saturation command, almost all the way down until it's white. Kind of a gray. Or maybe I'm going to even pick it to just be some kind of still gray, but that still has some amount of blue in it. And now when I do this fade from here, I'm just dragging to the edge of the page here. It looks like that. It's probably a little bit more realistic, a little bit more subtle too. I'm going to go back to the much lighter color. I'm just going to cheat. Just type in a different percentage here. I'm doing this so that you can see it easier. So if I use this tool, again, this gradient tool right here, if I push and hold the tool down and I only move a little teeny distance, it makes the blend from here to there, and then it fills the rest of it with the background color. If I grab it from here and I just pull it to the short side of my document, again, it's still making kind of a small ball. I think what most people probably have you do is start about in the middle, but you don't have to be exact, and drag to like a corner, and that'll be kind of a smooth transition from this on out. If you want it to go even more though, I could drag it off the page. And that's going to increase the size of the light area because technically the darker is not going to happen till out here, which isn't even on my page, so it won't be part of it. So again, small movement gets me that. Huge movement. Pretty much the whole page is that lighter color. Here to like a corner gets me that. Um, so now all I have to do is just save this as a Photoshop file blue, and then I can import that into InDesign or Illustrator or anything like that. If for some reason I wanted to come back to it though or experiment, maybe I don't know if this is the right shade, or I was thinking maybe blue, maybe green, maybe purple, I could pull down and duplicate that layer if I wanted to. I could go back and delete everything on that layer, reset new colors, and start from scratch. 
But what a lot of people do is they tie this to the hue saturation tool. So I'm going up to image adjustments, hue saturation. So I'm on my top layer here. If I look at this little picture and if I slide it to the left, it's going to make it different shades of green. I'm going to go back and reduplicate the blue again. I'm going to hide the green one. I'm going to go back up to the shortcut for image adjustments, hue saturation. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to slide it more into the purple realm. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and do some weird trick. I'm going to leave these three options all together in the same file as different layers. I'm going to quickly go to InDesign. Here's a page. I'm going to go up to File and I'm going to pull down to Place. Navigate to find my document. Click it. Move to the page. Perfect. Um, or, I guess, perfect now. And if you wanted to mess around with this, though, there's this neat feature. I could go up to File and I could go back down to Place. But I can turn the Show Import Options on, which we normally don't want to use because it's too much information. But in this case, with layered files, it can be quite handy. Re-click on the blue. And this time it's asking me, which layer do I want? Well, I know the top one is this color. So I'm going to just go ahead and shrink this down. But if I was to replace again with that button still selected and I go to blue, I could turn off the top layer, which reveals me my purple one. And then I could go up to File Place and I could again click this on as long as this button is still checked. And I could unhide those ones. This was my original kind of turquoisey one. So in a way, rather than having to make three separate files, I could actually import three different layers from the same document until I decided which one matched the rest of the objects on my page better or something. And if for some reason you think these are too dark, now that you've done them, no, oh, I like this one, but it's just too dark out here at the edge. You could click on it, go to Object, Effect, Transparency, make sure that the Preview button is checked, and it, right now it's saying that the mode is normal and the opacity is 100%, so it's showing me exactly what I did in Photoshop. But if you liked the tone of this, I don't want green, I don't want turquoise, I want this kind of bluish purple, but it's too dark, I could slide the opacity down to the left and it's going to lighten everything on the page, the darks and the lights. At some point if I take it all the way down into here it'll disappear. And even here I'm losing a lot of the inner color so it's not it's probably closer to being white in here now than it was before. But that's a way for me to be able to adjust. Uh, so again to do that let's click on your blend or any kind of picture that you put in here. Object, Effect, Transparency. Make sure the Previews button on and just change the opacity to something lighter. And you could sit here with the preview button and you could see how well this one matched. Is that better than maybe what the original was? So again, making gradient blends in Photoshop.